that was fantastic. I really enjoyed the last three talks. It's brilliant. And I think it's interesting to hear you be so enthusiastic and passionate about you know, your expertise and what you've been achieving with children, seek photographs with children. And I'm coming from a diff the other angle, which is I was a teacher and a head teacher for 10 years and I work for Hamilton Trust and I work with student teachers. And I hope I can contribute something this morning, just at how, um, what it's like when you're a teacher or a head teacher and you've got so many conflicting demands and you've probably got this marvellous information and activities and why aren't the teachers, you know, using us? So I'm sort of coming from that angle, what the problems are and how you can perhaps get, get their attention and get them working with, with you so that they can really benefit. Because Kirsty said something very interesting. She said, teachers don't really know much about this, I don't think, this new curriculum, the new, um, you know, the prehistoric. They don't. I can assure you they don't and you've got a huge amount to offer and there are an awful lot of new teachers there's a huge turnover of teachers of course and they're all new and they need your help they're delivering and that's why I'm talking much more from the English curriculum I was very envious listening <coughs> to Brian about the Scottish one because that's what we'd all love a bit less prescription but unfortunately I'm working in the English system and there's a lot more uh, you know we're up against it and that's why I said they've got the new national curriculum to teach and that covers a lot more of the earliest civilizations but they've got to raise standards in English and maths that's the big thing and it's being measured all continuously right from early years onwards and teachers and head teachers that's what they're always being judged on so I'm sorry if I sometimes I'll sound a bit you know well it's why she mentioning that but I'm afraid that is the real life of what's going on in real schools that that's a, the raising standards in English and maths is is really top so if I keep going on about that that is why how you're going to get the attention of schools that's what I'm really coming from so this is the school I was head of for 10 years West Oxford Primary and we really believed in rich tasks and so I'm going to come back to that but that's about not just tasks that just you do something and then it goes but lovely rich tasks that Kirsty was talking about you know that working with bones and then getting them to create their own skeletons and, and those you know you're talking about that wonderful you know around the stones and seeing the sunrise or sunset sunset wasn't it but that is the sort of thing that is a rich task isn't it it's something you really remember when you look back at school it's not the one-off lesson it's when you really came together as a group so I'm very passionate about that that it's rich learning and the classics club again they'll come they, they, they were doing rich tasks weren't they so that's what I think um, that's what you need to have in schools so when that when I was a teacher what I wanted was, you know, people to come and give talks, workshops, or to get me into a visit to really stimulate interest in a new topic. But as a head, and that's the outside of the school, then I was really looking at if you say the you sent me some some material about what you could offer my school, I would be thinking about budgets and I've got, perhaps I should be concentrating on something else. So you've got to attract the attention of perhaps the head or the head of the history department or whoever it is that, you know, that you, they really want you to come into school and they can spend that money on that activity. And you might have to say really, really, really in big letters, this will help raise standards in writing, reading and maths because then they'll really be much more likely to, to get it in, in their school budget. So then I, yes, that, sorry, that was just a Brooks, um, sorry, that wasn't anything to do with what I just said. <laughs> I also do a bit of work with student teachers. And again, I'm working with student teachers who don't know much about the new history curriculum. And they really would benefit from your expertise. So 
what they that that would involve inset to really support them with the new material and that might be inset in an individual school a partnership of schools or at a conference so that's another way for you to really benefit teachers um, really you do know so much that they don't know um, about you know they, they'll know a bit about the facts about but they don't know about those inquiry skills or about actually about um, chronology or about how you use evidence or different types of evidence and it's when you do inset giving them lovely resources like the book that we just were given um, the things like the timeline that's really what will get the hook and what they'll want to use you and I also work for Hamilton Trust this is a photograph of a flyer that goes out into schools and they provide online resources so that's very much an area that's really growing teachers are very busy um, they want resources and it's a lot more about um, downloading resources they can use in the classroom we want rich good ones and Hamilton provide them it's a charity so they're not very expensive there are other, lots of providers out there like teach it primary um, we actually just asked for a donation for the year and it's not profit making if they make any money it goes into a certain set of schools that they're supporting in Blackbird Lees and that's how I got to work with Kim who's been helping us with providing really really strong resources that teachers can and our brief is that an NQT could work with those resources and provide really high quality lessons so we pro we're trying to provide lessons which lead to a rich outcome as I said rich task but they're very much based you know using um, the correct historical skills and inquiry they're not just you know, a worksheet or um, you know an activity but which is more an in language it's very easy for a teacher to do a language activity that's not really history or about archaeology so um, so when I'm working as the topic coordinator you know that's trying to you you know use the expertise to really raise our game so that what we're providing is high quality and we want them to be inspiring and we talked you've talked we, I would talk about cross-curricular plans so that you're using the history context to raise standards in writing and maths to a high level when I first started teaching was um, we do a topic and they might write a bit about the Romans and it would just be really copying out of a book and now we are much more skilled at um, making sure that it's high level persuasive writing based on talking about an issue um, which I might have some examples here so I hope I can make some um, useful recommendations about ex promoting excitement about history and archaeology of course and but about raising achievements in English and maths so yes obviously communicate your passion and expertise but you get you have to really wow teachers um, with whatever you whether it's when you talk to them or if you're sending out materials about your enthusiasm um, I remember talking to Kim about was it a bronze mirror he started telling me about the mirror in the bronze age mirror <coughs> And I remember being, oh, well, I've never seen that before, and that you were so passionate about it, it really got my attention. I thought, I'll just get to know more about this. Um, you've, we've had loads of examples of this, but you've really got, that's the, you know, when you're working with children, you've got to make it really age appropriate, and we've had great examples of that, but you've got to make it irresistible almost. And I've got a little example here, which actually Kim helped to work on. Sorry, again. Um, this was about introducing children the technology from Stone Age to Bronze Age to Iron Age. And they made a little box. And then over the course of three sessions, so they get all the background about Stone Age technology, they made um, a tool out of sugar paste that they 
had to grind, a bit like stone, a stone <coughs> technology. They made um, a chocolate uh, tool, and this was uh, to emulate the um, bronze um, technique making tools. And then they made a pastry iron axe, as if it was an Iron Age axe. And so they ended up with three tools that were all edible, and they had a little picnic at the end and talked about the development <laughs> of the technologies, which is, was a sort of, I would talk about memorable outcomes. But, that, but the, behind that was a lot of you know, expert knowledge about that technology. Um, this is probably obvious, but I think they, if they, they are struggling with the new topics, and if you can bring your archaeological expertise to bear on the actual specific um, new topics, so the Shang Dynasty is very new, and um, this is the new content about Benin, and we're just developing about. Um, about the other ones, but they are they're, they're the mayor. That's a new one as well. And uh, you can bring your your expertise as archaeologists because you can look into those topics and bring um, your those skills to look at the new content. And then teachers will they'll be looking out for that sort of new um, support. This was a new. This was. This is also the um, Islamic civilization of 900. Is a new topic, and we had to use somebody to keep a look at those resources. So that was quite a tricky topic, and make sure that we hadn't made some glaring errors, which we had. So this is the sort of thing that you can also contribute to these perhaps online um, providers that who need experts out there to keep an eye on the the actual accuracy of the content. Um, so I think this is just saying that if you're going to try and get them to engage with archaeology, you know, telling them that these are exciting contexts and they'll really raise children's game in you know, maths and writing, really make that obvious, that, that, that there's going to be an investigation, and they'll improve their maths, or that this will be a really immersive experience where they become tribal you know, tribes and then they can do some writing at the end of it about that. It could be creative writing or not. So this was um, um, a debate. This is about the... Um, this has just been interesting. <laughs> this is the uh, new um, content. I've forgotten the actual title of the the um, topic now. That's right. So this is all about the new, the new topic about the Benin. And um, children are given speech bubbles about the different um, viewpoints of whether we should keep the artefacts that we've got in this country or let, let them have them back. And then the children have to find somebody with a different um, viewpoint debate with them and then go off and write a bit of um, high quality writing, a poster or a persuasive letter or a blog about their final you know, opinion. And this was a, a really good um, work on ziggurats and they had to make their own models. And so it's obviously using 3D maths. And uh, there's a very good example in Stone Age to Iron Age. I know it was the din these uh, dinosaurs topic where they were um, looking at footprints, fossilised footprints, and how you could work out the mathematics of who actually made the footprint. So that's another way of getting teachers to see that they could really do some high quality uh, maths based from the topic, and it would really could be quite challenging for some of their more able pupils. That's another thing that's very good for teachers. They have to really address the point they have um, more able pupils. Um, I think providing resource packs that can be used again and again is another way to get teachers to really think, well, I'll get that person in because I'll have something at the end of it, which, like the timeline that you showed, something that they can use next time they do the topic. So producing really good um, resources, 
making everything, in, I said that before, but about also using IT, and you mentioned about Minecraft, but making sure that it's really memorable and for younger ones, lots more dressing up and puppets and older ones, um, outdoor learning and lots of role play, um, just to make sure it's at the right level. Practically, if you're trying to get hold of school, get their attention, remember that head teacher and teachers, they don't, they don't spend much time at their desks answering emails, so they might take a lot longer. Um, also, think about the fact that they're planning um, a long time in advance. So you, they might be doing some history topics in the September term, so they need, you might need to contact them six months ahead because they, they'll know that topic's coming up. Um, if you're offering support, because sometimes it's just if you if you're there too late, it, it, they've already got everything planned for that for that time. Budgets, you either get the budgets in April, and it very quickly gets spent. So it's good to get them at the early time of the year, and really maximise the value that you can bring. So if, you, if you're offering in um, workshops in classrooms, offer it across lots of classes or over a half day offer or across a partnership because um, they, they're all struggling with money at the moment. So you've got a huge amount to offer teachers, I really do believe that. And I hope I've seen some useful ideas. Anyway. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you.